technical sports in Kenya, excuse me, I need to be specific, um, uh, were obviously uh, only accessible by privileged backgrounds, by, by, by families who could afford for, 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 for their children to be able to play and for themselves uh, as a hobby, as a recreation. Uh, we didn't have so many, uh, how do you say, preoccupations. We didn't have so much TV. Uh, we didn't have so many PlayStation and, and, and going for parties. Uh, back in the day, uh, I remember if you speak to any of the former tennis players who used to play 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, they literally had tennis, 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 daily, daily, daily. And nowadays, it's very difficult to find that level of commitment or specialization in any sport uh, because of the very demanding lifestyles that we live, very demanding curriculum, school curriculums. So my point is, back in the day, Asif had incredible hands when he was on the tennis court, great finesse. Uh, if anything, he lacked the physicality around it, but that's because it wasn't being trained. It wasn't acclaimed around the world. If you're an amateur, why should you go to the gym and work out? You know, uh, and it, it was, it, it's, it's apparent nowadays we've got 16 year olds who are six foot five and they hit the ball harder than anyone else, um, but they lack the finesse, interestingly enough. So a lot of us are seeing this regression uh, going back to say, right, let's, let's have more soul. Let's have more soul in tennis. And I believe strongly as a coach now that the more and more I train these children to be physical specimens who can hit with great technique uh, and know where to place the ball, they need soul and you can't train that. <laughs>